All right. There's this dirty, grimy engine here. Now, I've already run this once. We had a will it run a while back when we put this one out. It had a whole bunch of earwigs that started coming out of the exhaust. So I know it runs um, at some point. But we're going to put it in the oval window up here. And it's going to, I don't know, it was just putting it in there temporarily to try the car out, to drive it, see if it runs and drives, and how it drives. So that's what this video is going to be about. Well, let's kind of look over this engine first and see what's correct and what isn't. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's not correct on this. I, I don't know if the fuel pump is right. Some of the guys said there's a different fuel pump. Uh, it doesn't have the preform line that goes up to here. So that's not correct um, for the, your car it is. Uh, the case number... If I remember right, came out to a 55 built, so it's pretty close. It's a 54 car, so it's actually going to have a lot of the same stuff on it. Um, looks like we're missing a piece of tin right there, which is, that's pretty important. It goes underneath here, so that's going to have to be found and put one on there before it's any permanent. Uh, this engine is in here permanently. This should have had... A what they call a flat lip pulley right here so this shouldn't have this rounded edge it should also have for this car a big nut on here the 36 millimeter nut um, it should not have this distributor what is that from probably it looks like a 65 40 horse my guess what do you think you tell me it's not a big one like the 40 early 40s were it looks like there was a lot of parts on this car that came from a 65 so um like it, they crashed it in the front and rear and it had front and rear fenders from uh, 65 and uh or no not on this car it was on my other one where they got this engine from came from a 65 so uh, it was in a 60 it was in a 60 bug and uh so anyway the front and rear parts were from 65 on that car so my guess is on that car, they also took the distributor out and maybe they had some issues with the old one, the old 36 horsepower one. I think I have, for future reference, I think I have a double or a 010. So that'd be kind of cool you know, to a retro speed thing. And I could possibly put in no crass a kit later. But right now, like I said, I'm just going to put this in just to make the car run and drive. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I don't know if I have a way. I mean, we'll do some testing on that to see if it actually puts out power. I got a battery on order right now. So it's not going to get here until later this week when I'm going to film some of the rest of this. But first of all, I think what we'll do is just wash it off and take a look at it. And I, I'm going to get rid of these. I, these. I don't know if they're silicone. One of the things you'd never want on a Volkswagen silicone wires they need to be the real wire these feel like silicone wires so those are no good so anyway we'll get get these off of here uh, those are good on there but uh but i think the wires might be silicone if they're silicone that means they're a resistor wire you need to have a solid wire on a volkswagen yeah it's a silicone yeah so i don't know they could have the siliconized uh thing in the middle VWs don't work well with those. They need to have the solid wires on them. So I got another wire set, I'm sure, for that. Uh, use one, of course. And we'll just kind of butter this one up and get them ready to make this car move and see how she drives. Talk to you a bit later. All right, since this thing's all, I mean, it's got paint peeling off of it and rust everywhere. I think I'm just going to remove the tin real quick and give it a quick sandblast and paint. Because I'm going to reuse the tin on it later. So, I figured you may as well. And I just, it just every time you touch it, you know, you get rust all over your hands. So, I'd rather just uh, 
do that real quick so we'll get on it I know some of you guys really want to see me just do it raw without having to do all this, but that's why I wanted to take these off to you because, uh, you know, I certainly don't want to be driving it and have it overheat real quick. You know, I'd rather take it apart real quick and just clean everything up, you know, at least then it'll have a fighting chance if I'm going to drive it without... Uh, that done just to make a sense i'll just throw some uh, paper towels in the uh, ports blow all this crap off of here and hmm, i don't think i'm gonna mess with the oil cooler it, it did run so I'll, again I, i'm gonna take this out and rebuild it later so i'm just trying to just want to you know not cook the motor so it wouldn't be a good idea plus i can these are just all you know everything's peeling and rusty so i figured i'll just paint it real quick because i just can't stand like everything you touch it's just rusty and dirty it makes your hands filthy nah let's clean it up a little bit all right i'm gonna remove this quarter inch fuel hose that's that's a no-no gotta use five millimeter continental hose that's all i ever use Make sure it's Continental, not the... There's other brands out there that just aren't good. You might say German, but Continental is the only one I use. So these things here, this is fire hazard to me. People tell me I have a fire hazard when I have a fuel filter there. Never had a problem from that, but I've had that hose catch fire, that's for sure. Okay, so I got it clean. One of the things, uh, I'm not going to worry about the fuel pump. It probably, you know, may or may not. I, I think it worked. But um, I'm not going to take it apart. Um, I think I might pull this pulley off because it gets rust in the groove. It'll just wipe out the belt real quick. So I might just take a sandblast it out real quick and go with that. Um, there was a whole bunch of plug areas in uh, the oil cooler. You might say, oh, well, that makes the oil hot. No, it makes number three really hot. So that's where you got issues there. If your oil cooler's got plugged up, yeah, it'll make the oil hot, but number three is going to be starved for air, and that's the biggest problem. So yeah, your oil can be pretty hot and still work, but if your uh, number three is starved for air, it's death. So it'll, it'll uh, seize or Sometimes they dry seize and then it wipes out the rod bearing. That happens too. So anyway. So sandblast away on these things here and let's get her uh, put together. I got also I was gonna tell you guys about. Another thing I see guys do on YouTube all the time is <laughs> when you got an old engine like this has been sitting, it, don't adjust the valves. Don't do that until you have to run it for a while. Because what happens is between the valve and the seat, a lot of times there's a little bit of rust on the seats and you gotta let it beat that stuff off before you adjust the valve.
put this stuff on. Well, we're just making a little progress here. I've been in the house back and forth doing a little picking away at this thing. So I got this much on. And then what I do, whenever I get like an old transmission that I'm putting in, take the clutch disc off and uh, put it up on here and you'll notice and it doesn't want to go on. So you got to clean those splines out really good. Otherwise, you're going to have a heck of a time putting that motor in. So anytime you have a transmission out, it's a good idea if you really want to make things work. You get your wire brush on a drill or whatever and uh, clean the splines up. Clean up the end of this. Give it a little sandpaper. Remember, that's things on that, on that bearing in there. And if it's all rusty on the end, and you know it's going to wear the bearing out. So anyway something to think about so it never hurts to check this anyway you know just to while you got it out even if it's in a transmission you've had out before just getting that thing to slide on that shaft will save your butt when you go to put that engine in so like i said we're going used on this thing anyway so the, i just checked the clutch disc clutch just to make sure it wasn't totally gone there's plenty left that'll be good for a little while you know just to Get it on the road. Eventually, that's going to get changed. Go ahead and clean the, some of the rust off of here, off of that surface, and I'll just put this back together and we'll go with it. All right, I figured I'd have a current conversation with you guys while I'm doing this. I'm waiting for the paint to dry for some stuff. I figured I'll put my fuel filter on, and some people like to tell me that I shouldn't put it here. Uh, you know, at, I have data from. 30,000 cars that have been in shops that I've worked at and I've never seen an engine fire from this thing being here. Um, and the reason that I put it here, and a lot of guys go, well, why don't you just put it under the tank? Why don't you put it under the car? I wonder one, if you ever change one that's underneath your car on the road somewhere, uh, it's such a pain um, if it's underneath somewhere. And you're on the road and you're suspecting your fuel filter is bad you can't look at it and see you gotta jack the car up you know on the side of the road somewhere check the fuel filter underneath and if it's clamped on here i've never out of thirty thousand cars i've never seen an engine fire from that so that's pretty good data but if you want to do whatever you want to do you can do that but the reason I put it here, I'm going to tell you the reason why I've had, you know, and, and, and some people, you know, I forget about these reasons why, and because it's, I just automatically do it this way because I've had so many problems in the past from having them other places. Um, and I'll tell you what, and I, I've kind of remembered these things as I've read those comments, people telling me about engine fires. And again, I, I've seen a lot of engine fires from this hose not having clamps on it. Definitely seen engine fires from that. I definitely have seen engine fires from the barb in the carburetor coming out. The, uh, and it's nothing, you could not put a fuel filter on there and you'll still have a fire from that. So those are things to really check. It is on this one here, it has the threaded carburetor. So that's not gonna happen on this one. The other thing I've seen is people don't maintain it and the fuel hose gets old or they don't put continental hose in. They put in regular quarter inch. I had a piece around here somewhere. They have these regular quarter inch. If the hose looks braided like this and it's gray, there's a black one running around right now. And it's fake. It's not even real German, I don't think. The gray continental hose is the only thing I'll use on this line. In fact, I'll only use that on the whole car. And 
you still have to change it. You know, you can't just leave it that way and go, oh yeah, for five years it's fine. No, I, when we used to get a car frame for a tune-up, if this thing looked at, like it was at any point old, if it was like slightly old, we just replace it. Replace the, the two, you know, the clamps are usually okay. We put a brand new piece of hose on, we put clamps on every connection. And then again, I've never seen one of these things actually blow up. And if you notice, that's a name brand on there. Uh, Melee, not the best name brand, okay? Melee is kind of a cheap German part, but uh, M-E-Y-L-E. -E. Um, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's kind of a cheap German, German part, uh, but it's better than not having a name brand. Because if they're going to put their name on it, usually it's going to be better than the Chinese type ones. And again, I've seen those even not break. So, I don't know. Never seen one of those go out. But we always had the Bosch ones back in the old days. So, that was what we used to use. But the reason I put it here. So, see this metal line right here going up. I've had rust inside that line come out and get clogged in the needle and seat engine wouldn't run trying to figure out thought the fuel pump was bad a lot of hassle found out that it was actually uh the metal line came apart and a piece ended up in the needle and seat completely plugged it uh it was a real pain so the other reason is and so you could see fuel in here and, and so when i'm when i'm driving a lot of things that happen vapor lock happens on the road so Sometimes the fuel line here, uh, it gets too close to the exhaust in the back and vapor locks. Uh, and, and again, if you notice over here, I'll bring you guys up close. I always put rubber around this metal line where it goes through. I use this. I'll, I'll put a couple of zip ties on there. Again, this is not a permanent fix, but I still don't want a new car that I just built to catch fire always you know I mean just because I didn't do a stupid little thing like put a hose around it you know I don't know how old this guy is here um so the reason I put it here is because then I can do a visual I can see that I have fuel in here so if I can see that I have fuel in there it helps me if I have a problem going on I'm on the road and I have a problem I can look at the fuel filter and go, hey, how come there's no fuel in there? All right, maybe I'm vapor locking, maybe I'm out of gas, maybe I'm, uh, you know, maybe the fuel pump just quit. It just makes it easier for me to diagnose something. That's one of the reasons I love to have it right here. Uh, again, 40 years, never had one of these leak, never. Um, never heard of one leaking. The only things I've heard of are the clamps coming loose or not putting clamps on it. You guys think this is Chinese fingers fuel line and they put this on and they go, well, this is Chinese finger fuel line. It's supposed to stay on. No, it's not. It is not. It's just braided fuel line. It doesn't, you know, it has a, has a braiding on the outside of it. It doesn't make it any better or worse than any other fuel line. But the reason I use this is because the rubber's better with the Continental then if you get even gates and gates is not uh, the correct size so they're like quarter inch or three eighths they have you know American size they don't have eight millimeter gates fuel hose so or oh, sorry five millimeter fuel hose some of them are five and seven depends on which uh, setup you got and they have and it's got these fuel filters have both they have a stair step here Five millimeter here and a seven millimeter up here so you can if you have a seven millimeter carburetor like if you have a two barrel you can run it to the outside part here clamp it really good make sure it's nice and tight again it's all I, i've never seen a problem from it but you do it up to you I, I you know it's all it's up to you whatever you want to do but that's how i've been doing it for 40 some odd years and again i've Never even heard of a problem. I've heard of people say that it was a fuel filter and you start investigating and you go, oh, the barburator, the barb came out of the carb. I, I was on my way home from uh, a show 
And uh, I was going through the canyon. The guy was pulled over on the side of the road. And we opened up his deck lid, looked at his bus, and I said, dude, your barb came out of the carp. Thank goodness it didn't go on the distributor and catch fire. Because literally, we were in, we were in the, uh, where was that, Ortega Mountains Canyon. <laughs> that would have been the problem. If his engine caught fire and then blew embers or something onto the side, we could have had a massive problem from that. But anyway... Luckily, it didn't didn't catch fire, but the barb itself, the little brass or I guess it's brass or copper, I don't know, comes out of the carburetor and then dribbles fuel onto the distributor, and that's an immediate fire. So, yeah, that's you know that's the fear is that this thing will break and put gas on the distributor, but I have never seen it happen. So. As long as it's maintained and replaced often, never seen a problem from it. So, anyway. so real quick again, the reason I have it here is because number one, I can see if there's a problem. So if I can see if there's dirt in the fuel, number two is I can see that I get fuel. Number three is I've had problems way you know far in the car so people if it's near the gas tank it doesn't do any good if that fuel line between the front and the rear of the car has some little bit of rust in there and comes off and ends up in the fuel filter back here it catches it so and i've had it actually get by the screen that's in here so people go oh there's a screen there it's not usually enough sometimes it's not enough it's just a just a little precautionary thing i've always put on cars and, I, and it's prevented a lot of problems having it right here. Again, you do it at your own risk, uh, but that's why I always put it there, because number one, I can see it. I want to be able to see what's going on. If it's getting dirty, I know. You know, it, it's under the car, you forget about it, and then you end up with issues. Another quick cardinal rule people seem to break in the Volkswagen world. There's two of them that I'm gonna talk about real quick. This one, is uh, it depends on which setup you have and this one here particularly some of them have a, a, wa a washer that's built in to this thing but the ones that have a washer the early six volt one would have a washer like that a flat side washer and you put either either you put the fan on with out the shims and you put the shims on this side or you put the shims on this side it depends on how you want your fan to not rub. <clears throat> so if your fan's rubbing, you need to have shims on one of the sides. So there always needs to be three shims on here. Guys, I've seen one shim, two shims, and you wonder, you're driving down the road, all of a sudden you hear this noise and your fan cracks right here. It's because you didn't have the proper amount of shims in there. If this stuff's right, it lasts forever, just about. But guys, take the shims off. They they, they, they go, oh, I don't need a shim for this. They put it on. They go, okay, no, they, it doesn't rub on the shroud, so I don't need the shims. And they just put this washer on, put the fan on, put this washer on the outside. The wave washer goes on the outside, okay, and they tighten it up. It doesn't have the three shims in there. Um, I don't know how or why exactly we can guess that it's the amount of threads that it's on there or something but if you don't have those shims on there on either one of the one of the sides your fan will crack happens a lot now on the other side of the engine on uh, this side you got your pulley for your for your belt right and i've seen the same thing the same thing nine total shims need to be on there nine not five, not seven, not two. So what happens is you, as your belt wears, you you wrote you move the shim from the inside to the outside. So let's look at this one. Here's what was on there. A lot of shims. Nine is a lot. <laughs> okay. So look at one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 
Well, at least there was nine, so it should be okay. Thirteen. There should be nine shims on there. Okay, I, I don't know. Maybe, and if you don't do that, ask Randy Slack what happens. He will tell you. If you don't have nine shims on there, your pulley will crack. So I've seen guys go, oh, these old pulleys are junk because they crack. No, they last forever if it has nine shims. I mean, they'll last a long time. They get rusty pitted like this one. It's not so good. I think I'm going to try and take this one off and put that one on because that one's a little better. So, and I put took this off the bucket truck. Uh, I wanted to make sure, I, I think there's a 80 and a 90 millimeter, I can't remember, generator stand. And this one here is the correct one that was on the bucket truck. In the 40 horse, it was on that. So it interchanged, which is good, I think. Yeah, as long as the pulley lines up, I'm not sure. So just going to double check everything because I, I don't remember when they changed. I think it was the 25 horse was the... One with the smaller one, or 80, 90, and 100. I, I I can't remember. It's been so long since I've done 6-volt. I always change them. So anyway. Um, yeah, I do have a 6-volt car, but it's just not something I know all the information on readily available because it's just not something that I've done very often. So anyway, 9 shims on your generator, guys. It, it's, that means you might have 5 on this side and and, and 4 on the other side, or... Four on this side and five on the other side, but it has to be nine. It has to be a total of nine, or you will have a cracking issue with your pulley. I've done all this stuff. I've had these problems. So anyway, talk to you guys a little later. Well, I'm going to show you something that I did not know. I don't work on 36 horse motors very often, but if you look here, I learned this this weekend. That pulley is a lot smaller, isn't it? Because the generator stands a little bit taller. Never knew that. Again, I we used to throw these away. These were 36 horse motors were throwaways. So, luckily, at the Big Bear show this weekend, uh, somebody had some pulleys and the guy says, Hey, that's a 36 horse one. And I put it up next to the other one and not knowing that this one had the wrong one on it. Uh, I bought one 36 horse just, just in case I needed it, which I did. And, uh, another one, uh, for 40 horse and went five bucks a piece. So how can I go wrong? So now I'll get the right pulley on here so I can get the generator on it. Had to take off everything again. I've had to take off everything on and off of here five or six times. That's the way it usually goes when you have a lot of hodgepodge weird stuff. There's another thing I'm missing is the spring tube for this, for the throttle, which sounds wonderful. Okay, that. Great. Let's get that on here and we'll check it out. All right, so I got the red top Optima hooked up. Really, the best way to go on a six volt, I think. Now, let's see if the starter from 1954 works. Let's listen. I think it does. Let me get you guys in the back. Tell me if the starter drive six sticks out. Uh, Well, I got to tell you guys, uh, the last, I don't know how many videos, I've just had nothing but stuff like this. I mean, 
So right now I'm finding out that, you know, I've had a 57 bug and it must have had a different 36 horse for it because this one's probably there's podge podge parts all over this I don't know but there was uh, you know the issue I'm running to now is the heater box they have an early and late heater box the uh, stale air that I didn't know about of course again because I don't really mess with 36 horses like we used to just throw them away so now you know we're trying to save them so i'm learning all new stuff about them but uh every time i try and get the bottom stud in um even if i angle it different ways i keep on having the uh heater box hitting the metal and then i look at the other ones they had they had a earlier heater box for the 57s that I I'm gonna guess that mine goes out further on the other goes out like instead of just going down it kind of goes out a little bit and then down and that was to clear the later model heater boxes because usually you should be able to put a 36 horse in a 36 horse car without any trouble you know it should just go right in and it's not going right in so anyway, now I got to figure out what the solution to that is. Can't find one of those heater boxes, really. They're, you know, not existent. And, uh, well, you can find them. I mean, if you've got unlimited dollars in your wallet. So anyway, uh, I got to figure this out. I pulled the engine back out. And either shave something off that heater box, remove it. Or, so I can't get it turned this way enough to hook it underneath. Like, that's what you normally do when you put an engine in. You usually want to hook this heater box underneath the, the uh, metal there, the seal. And then you then the other side kind of hooks in, and then you kind of have the engine tilted down. Then you kind of put it back in. They all go in the same. Uh, and it's, of course, harder to get a bigger engine in a small car. They're actually really difficult to get like a, you know, 2332 in this because it's why it has, you know, longer rods and spacers and all kinds of crap than get one of those big engines in. So I think what C pistons or something, I don't know. But anyway, figure this out. I'll get back to you guys. All right. I'll show you guys what we came up with here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been just fun. So it's been about two hours since I till pulled the engine back out. I've been fiddling with this, and what's wrong is, I guess you spot weld these in place, and we put these new J tubes on here with no car to put it in, and uh, they were spot welded way up here. So now I just got them loose. I think what I'm going to do put the engine in and then look at where they should be and maybe spot weld them when they're in and put them back together i don't know i don't really care about the heater boxes right now like i said i just want to drive it it's just all this hassle just for that so anyway so let's give it a try again put it back in it should fit now i don't know i you know i i know that these are taller than the ones that came on this car so well, we'll find we will find out if uh, it will go in with the wrong heater boxes on it. You know, it it should, but nothing's gone the way it should.
All right, let's check here. I, I've been working on this thing all day, trying to get the engine in, and I've never had an engine this hard to get in the hole. It's just stupid, I don't understand. I mean, so this thing goes, my pilot, it goes right in it. Uh, right now it's giving me difficulty because I just got done fighting with the thing getting in and out of there, so it lines up how tight that is. Now this is the problem I'm running into. It's just, it goes all the way in. <laughs> it used to. Last time I had it in, it did. That's all out of alignment. Now, I don't understand that. It was aligned up perfectly. The last time I put it in, I had the same problem. I can get this bolt started. I even got that one started and then it stripped. It Usually if I can get two of them to start, it'll just go right in and fight me a little bit. You know, it usually has this problem trying to get it to pile it. This went right in a minute ago. <laughs> of course, when I turn on the camera. So anyway. Obviously, the clutch is out of alignment now, but it wasn't before last time I just put it in. I know if I'll put it in alignment, it'll probably do the same thing. And then it goes in and get that one started, and then it just won't, won't pile. There it goes. It goes all the way in now. Nope, it's not. Take that off. All right, so what's been happening is I could see where it's going in about as far as my thumb is right here. And it's just getting stuck. And I mean, it seems to be when I put it on here, it goes all the way on. But you can feel a little bit of resistance on there. So <laughs> this one's picky. It needs to be right. It needs to be nice and sliding on. There's that little bit of a... I got to get it to where that thing just slides on with no issues because it is not going on nice. So, and I'm using an input shaft to uh, do the alignment. That's always the best way. Um, but that little bit, if you can see that mucky stuff in there, I think that's causing problems. So, just a little bit of stuff in there. That's so why you got to get that clean. So I always tell everybody, but yeah, I guess on the old german parts like these the tolerances were a little bit tighter because this is like an original clutch plate from a long time ago so uh tolerance was a little tighter and uh you know it's just a little more finicky so anyway this is driving me nuts though so. all right last and final attempt here hopefully this is going to do it i put a little tiny bit of grease on there cleaned all the splines with a brush uh, i really need like a really good stainless steel one uh, small like toothbrush size I don't have it but I found a nylon one and I just did it with that it seemed to you could slide it on and off there real easy without any grease I put a little bit of grease on it the input shaft slides in and out it's kind of snug though still with the grease and so I've greased it that's why I greased it to kind of give it a little bit more uh, when I'm pushing it, it'll have a little bit of something to slide on. Just like oil might not be enough. I think grease might work. But don't put very, if you ever do this, don't put very much grease, just a little bit. Because all you're trying to do is get the engine transmated. You don't want to have to fling off and get all over the clutch. But it really won't. It, the clutch is in a different place, you know, where the clutch material is. It would probably hit the spring plate more than anything a little bit outside of the spring plate that wouldn't really hurt anything but so let's go with it and see what happens i'll tell you the results in a minute all right so here's what i'm doing it's going to wrap these up i'm leaving the wiring harness original because i don't know if we, later on i'm going to hook up get the old screw type stuff on here so i'm just going to make it putting these ends on without cutting the harness. So if I want to do that later, I can. See this here? Because I really don't know exactly what I'm going to do to the engine yet, so. So this is just temporary. We're just going to put this in here. 
get it running and go from there. All right, here goes nothing. Let's go to, oh, <laughs> got that one hooked up wrong, didn't I? One's hooked up to your turn signal. Oh, wait. Huh. Oh, there's no bulbs. I don't know if I have bulbs in there or not. Maybe they're hooked up backwards or something. Fell out. Looks like that one's not right. Let's try this here. Ready? <laughs> that starter's original. I don't think it's ever been changed. Let's see. I can't tell. Oh yeah, no fuses yet either. That's the problem. Guess I need to put a couple fuses in. Let me do that and just take a look at it in a minute. Get a little car spray, just see if it starts. I, I don't know if it's going to because it doesn't feel like there's very much compression in a couple of cylinders. They might need to fire a few times for it to build up compressions. So I don't know. Seems like it's gonna fire. I mean, one of the cylinders is. It's got compression on one pretty good, but the other ones. See if I can stick something in there. Just kind of give it a little, little bit of a fire here. Maybe it'll fire up for a second. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to need some ether, I think. What it probably needs is uh, my gas. It might fire up after a bit. With 6 volt, it's not crank cranking very fast. Uh, the second thing is, is the compression. It needs to crank a little faster because the if you can kind of hear it every time it goes over what's happening is uh the valves probably have a little bit of rust around the seats and once it starts running the valves will kind of beat themselves back into the seats run it for a little while and then that usually cures itself but uh you know when it's cranking this slow getting a little bit ether in there might give us some help so i'll probably get some of that real quick uh to make it a little easier to start uh, so I don't just tear up a starter, you know, because at six volts, it's, you know, it's pretty hard on that starter. So anyway, we need some gas. I need to hook up the throttle still. I don't have that hooked up yet. It's got to run the throttle cable and I got to hook up this fuel supply line and a couple other things and put some gas in the tank and a couple other items. I just want to see if it would fire real quick with that, but it kind of sounds like it wants to, but anyway, we'll bring it back. One last time, see. It's cranking kind of slow. It'll start right up once it gets going, I think, you know, once we get past this first start. So, anyway, got to do a little wiring change. I noticed we got here. I'm going to key on. Oh. Well, that must be oil pressure. Key on, left turn, that's working. Now you guys notice this one bounces because it's the return spring's a little messed up, so. Uh, but the other one doesn't wanna go up. I, I think it needs about eight volts. I can hear it trying. It needs the engine to be running. So that's the issue over there. So we'll check that stuff out a little bit later. I got uh, something wired up wrong. Because uh, I should have bulb check on right now, and I don't. I had one a minute ago. I don't now. So, I don't know. 
got to figure that out and then we'll go on from there. Try a couple other items. Headlights? Uh, looks like we got one. Well, let's see. Let's try, maybe that's high beams or low beams, I don't know. I still gotta screw this in. Maybe I'll do that too. Let's see. Now we got two. So something's working. Bright's bulb. Doesn't look like it. Let's get you back here. Is that illuminated? I think it is. So one of the bright fuses is not getting a good contact, I think. Safe to say. Headlights work. But your headlights work good. Alright, yeah. It's so hard to see his six volt. You can see that bulb was lit up a little bit. So that does work. So we've got that. I don't know. Well, let's see if I got dash lights. I see them. You see them in the back? Look. I see them. Dash lights are working. Okay. On the dimmer. A few items working. What about tail lights? I don't, I don't be able to see those right now, I don't think. What about these? No. No. Could be the switch. Sometimes you gotta take those old switches and spray some stuff in them and move them all around. Once you do that, they're usually fine. Uh, let's try it on the headlights and see if we got tail lights. I'm gonna think we might now. I think the switch is the issue. Nothing. I pre-checked these and grounded them. So I'm sure it's not a ground, I don't think. Probably an issue inside the switch. I'll just have to spray some stuff in there and blow it all around. Spray uh, electrical contact cleaner in there and take an air blower and blow it all around. Make sure they're working, move it in and out a bunch of times. All the stuff you gotta do on old cars. All right, so I got the throttle cable hooked up. Well, I don't know if I'm liking it, but the way the spring is, that's a new one. I got the original one somewhere, but I got that at Wellsburg West, and I don't know. I thought it looked good, but spring tension doesn't seem right. You know how that goes. And I got some ether. So I'm gonna hit this with ether. You don't always have to do that. The reason I'm doing it because then again, uh, the, the compression's low. I'm going to try and fire this thing and let it run over a little bit to kind of the valves to seat a little better. So, give me some ether. I still don't have gas, so I have no idea if this throttle is really going to work. Oh, prob probably not. Oh, got to hook the battery. And lo and behold, the wipers work and won't park. Wonderful. See them? Look at that. Okay. So here we go. Key on. No lights, but... The 1954 starter might have flooded it. I put a lot of stuff in there, so I got it floored. Try it without flooring it. Sounds like it's got compression. Kind of. They're not crank any longer than that, but that's pretty good cranking for a six volt car. Uh, the wipers are irritating. You hear them? I got a way to solve this problem. Just take the fuse out 
There we go. Don't think I need that for anything else. I'm trying to think. Uh, what's the other thing? Dome light? No. I wonder if that works. That'd be weird. Well, I might have flooded it. So, let's go let it sit for a few minutes. Because I hit it with a lot of carburetor spray off camera there, guys. So, just check in here. Accelerator pump working? I thought it wasn't. Pretty certain of that. I don't even know if the linkage works. Yeah. You can see it kind of moving this thing, but it's not really giving it a squirt. Oh, see? Oh, if I do that. Anything? I know it's not going to work. It's been sitting for years. So you can see it kind of pushing in. It's probably just the... Who knows? You never know. I mean, old German parts, you never know. It might work. But I'm just going to let it sit for a little while again. I'll bring you back in. Well, as I was lurking about back here, I happened to notice this. It might have something to do with the reason that it won't start. It's kind of weird. Oh, I know when that happened. I was trying to think, when did that happen? It was when I was putting in the throttle cable. So, yeah, I bumped off the coil wire. How about that? Now let's give it a try and see what it does. I almost thought there was no spark. It was kind of weird. Whoops, turn the key off. I was gonna keep the key on. Well, see, I didn't think that throttle cable was gonna work very good. And it didn't. Great. I got that uh, throttle cable spring. Not the right tension, guys. And it pulled it out back here. Lovely. So I can't work the throttle right now. Maybe I'll just crack it. No. I guess I get to fix this right now. Lovely. I think I'll get the right parts and we'll get my original one. Ah. Uh, the only problem I have with the original one is it's designed for the perch. So, yeah, we'll see if it works. Probably work better than this crap. Well, you gotta love the quality of parts nowadays. That's the end of the throttle cable. So now I've gotta do that job again. Okay, well, you know, you got a spring that's not the right tension. You got. This thing looks correct, but it's not really. Let's see if it works with the other one. So look at this. Here's the aftermarket one. That's original. But the only thing I said is it's designed to work on the one that has the perch on it. So I don't know if it's going to be too light attention. It might work. See, because it doesn't have the, there's a perch that this goes on. I have one on my other engine. I don't really want to take it out right now. Might have to. Because, uh, see, this one's the one from there. I thought, well, they maybe they designed it to work all together. No, I think this tried to get it as close as it looked the same, but no worky. While we're resting, let's just do this again. Just to see if it, you know, it works. Put the barrel nut in here. Hold the throttle open a little, a lot. See if it fires up and makes a bunch of noise. All right, fire in the hole. <laughs> nope. Little more tire spray. A little super go juice. Let's see if the rods rattle. The spring on the starter is not working. So it just does that. And I turned it too far, so let's try it again. This stuff I think has some two-stroke oil in it. It smells like dirt bike back there. Let's 
That sounds like it's going to run. We just got to get throttle and fuel. All right, we'll work on that. Looks like we're going to have to go into another day. All right, so we've got gas. Let's see if I can get you guys in a decent camera angle on them. Maybe down here. Um, but we got gas now. We got uh, in the tank. We got everything ready. I got a throttle cable. Anyway, let's give this a, sh a shot here. See if the fuel pump works. have no idea if that does. I don't know if we... I think we did test it and the fuel pump did work but how well i don't know so we'll give this a shot see if this thing runs and we'll propel the car around once i get that done <laughs> Should have picked up fuel by now. I remember when we did this last time, we ran this engine. Maybe do it one more time. We did this uh, with this engine last time, and we had a electric fuel pump hooked up, not to this line. We had it pushing through the pump. So, um, so I don't know. I think that's how we did it. So I like fuel pump hooked it to it before, so uh, I don't know if the fuel pump's any good. Try a little more of this gas and then give one more shot. What do you think? One more shot? Do as much as I can get in here. I'm trying to get it in the down a little straw. As much as I can inside there. Well. get a whole float bowl. I think I'm going to have to take the carb off and clean it. What do you guys think? I think I'm going to take the carb off and clean it and I'm going to have to rebuild the fuel pump. Pretty sure it doesn't start on this one. Take the air, take the air blower and blow off some of that to evaporate some of that fuel so we don't have a fire because I got a lot everywhere. So I'll bring it back in. I'll blow that off and bring it back in. All right, here goes nothing. Still no fuel coming up. Well, all right, so let's uh, let's take off the intake light and maybe I don't think it's plugged, uh, but maybe if I take the intake light off this side here, right here, and just see if there's fuel coming out of there. We should have fuel coming up. If it's trying to suck, it should have something on that side of the pump. So let's take that off and take a look. All right, let's use a little hamburger helper here. Maybe this will keep us from having to get a line wrench out. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's loose. 
That might be the problem, actually. If it's sucking air, so if you have on your intake side, like if you have a cracked uh, fuel line, or you have like a fuel line that's uh, got, you know, it's cracked or it's loose, or you got a, a hole in this thing, you'll, um, it will suck air easier than it sucks fuel. So, I don't see anything coming up. Got my air blower handy here. Might blow the hoses off, huh? No, we'll take a risk. I already checked the fuel to make sure it comes up. Could be, this line could be plugged. Could be. Well, let's do this. I'm gonna uh, go to the front. I have to get really a whole bunch of rags to cover that big lid. And I'm gonna um, pressurize the fuel tank a little bit with air. And I'm gonna see if uh, fuel comes out back here. Tell me what's happening. Doesn't look like anything came out, did it? Shoot. I'm going to have to give this skid a little more aggressive here. Um, got some kind of sort of a suction problem here. You know, the only thing, I didn't rebuild the uh, reserve switch, so it could be plugged there. Um, actually, I didn't clean the tank out, because, but it looked really clean inside, so... Probably should have done that, but I can see what's going on there. I have to pull the tank out. I don't know. Let me try blowing more air backwards. And I don't have the reserve switch hooked up yet. But let me try blowing a little more air backwards into it and see if it frees up. But I know I did the fuel line. I think I did that in the in the pan. I got a little more aggressive and really blew some air into that tank. Man, it didn't get anything, so. Something maybe plugged up back here. I don't know. Let's just give it a lot of air. Oh, it feels like something's plugged in here. Oh, yeah. Blew something off. What do you guys see in here? I thought it was that. The fuel line's blown off of there. The tank has fuel in it. And looks like this thing's leaking. I feel a little bit of fuel there. So this thing, yeah, this thing's plugged up. Or something so I'm gonna have to take the tank out again and then check this again I just some I something I just overlooked I usually take these off and at least clean out the filters in them and this time I didn't I forgot about it so anyway the tank was really clean when I got it. it looked like somebody had already done it so I just assumed they did of course that's never the good idea I never assume somebody else did something just got to do it yourself so let's pull the tank out and we'll uh take the gas out of there so this is my fuel line that came off right here this is where it blew off I sort of wondering uh, they had these at Harbor Freight tools they also have a one with this is a transfer pump uh, they had these at um, on Amazon absolutely the best investment I've ever made is buying one of these to take gas out of stuff and put it in tanks and take it from tanks put it in there Trying to pour gas is such a pain. You know, heavy gas can, lifting it up, holding it up. I think these are like less than 15 bucks. I mean, if you buy the one with the, they have one that's a smaller one. It's the same thing, but it's a smaller one uh, on Amazon you can get. And I have that one too. Uh, but it's nice one about, the nice thing about that one is it has an automatic shut off. This one doesn't. So... Yeah, that's the bummer of the Harbor Freight one. It doesn't have a, it has a bigger batteries in it, so it pumps a little faster, but it it doesn't automatically shut off. So if you go more than five gallons, and you're filling this thing up, you'll overflow and make a mess. So you have to watch it. So yeah, but it's a lot easier than trying to take this heavy gas tank out full of fuel. So I use these. So anyway, if you wonder what that is, that's what it is.
Hopefully you guys can see okay. It's a little dark in here. And, uh, well, that came off easy. Yeah, I did look at this. I, this is clean. So this is clean right here, the filter. It's got all the proper washers on it and everything. That's why I looked down in the tank and it was really clear. But I didn't have the reserve switch, so maybe it's halfway between. So anyway, it might be like, you know, turn like partially because I don't have the, the lever. I was looking for it. That's one of the reasons I didn't. Uh, that's why one of the reasons I haven't. Uh, I, I was putting the car together trying to find that lever to see if it was in there. And I haven't found it yet. So that's one of the reasons I haven't turned this yet. So let's see. Let's put it on reserve so we know we have enough. And then, um, so I know this thing's plugged because it, it just blew the line right off of that. So anyway, that's telling me where the plug was is right here. Let's see if we can free this thing up. Maybe, man, the rubber's even good on that thing still. Wow, on the boot. I didn't see it leaking anywhere. Something was a little moist there, but I think it was just when the line blew off, it just had something over there. So anyway, uh, but that looks really, really clean. If you saw inside there, that's really clean. So I don't know, maybe just right here. Let's try that. All right, let's just turn this real quick. We'll see where this thing's positioned first. All the way that way, all the way that way might have been just a little bit twisted so I'm gonna guess that's reserved let's see no it's plugged so this little piston thing came out and if what you can see here is you see there's a hole in the center. Taking a wire and move it over. And there's one on the side that goes over. And then there's this rubber piece in the middle. When I get the flashlight, you can probably see it. And in the middle, you can see that's completely plugged. And then there's two small holes on either side for like either side of the reserve. Yeah, that's pretty small, isn't it? So... I don't know if I've ever had one of these apart. Maybe I have been a long time ago. My other one just worked, so. Other ones in the other cars. So anyway, you can see there's like a little uh, copper or brass insert in the holes. And then there's a rubber washer that you can you can buy the kit. So I think I'm going to do that. All right, so putting this thing back together, I'm using the, this is a oxygen sensor socket. And I got a, what, a 10 or 11 millimeter over it. And I put it in the vise. Pressed it in. Now I'm just going to put this clip on. It takes two hands. I'll bring you back in. All right, that worked well. Yeah, I'll tell you, you just, you can order one of these on Amazon if you ever need to do that job. Uh, this is just send a unit socket, put it in, the, in a vise, or you could use a press, either one. And then test it. So what I'm going to do is, I blow through here. So that's one way. Because you could get this wrong if you did it. You don't line up the holes right. So it does the other way. Alright. Good to go. Let's put this back. Hi, right, and look, so I was just gonna show you this, and I saw all of a sudden the fuel started coming out. I wanted to see if it was gonna come out back here, because then we know we got fuel supply here. So we do. I gotta hurry and get this on. I get my hands free. I'll do it real quick. All right, let's give it a little shot of the go juice and see if it brings some fuel up into that fuel filter. All right, here goes nothing. Uh, hang on. 
Who knows what just happened here? Probably bad connection. Or maybe the starter gave up. Anybody surprised? Kind of the way things have been going. Hi, and lo and behold, the fuel pump pumps. How about that? Now we can get the starter to butt work. Huh. Any, any squirty? I doubt it. And I hit it one more time right when I was going to turn the camera on. And guess what it did? Wow. It actually idles. No accelerator pump, but... Look up the vacuum line, that might help. Look at that. It's fired right up into an idle. I just turned the key one more time. I was going to jack it up, put it up in the air, and bang on the starter. And uh, there it goes. It's running. I guess I can put the lid on this, right? Yeah. Let it run for a little bit. Yeah, I heard this engine run before. I mean, it kind of sounds like it's on four cylinders, right? A little low on compression. I think it needs a couple of hot laps. What do you guys think? I can hear some kind of firing back through there. I'm thinking one of the valves has got a little rust on it. Put this on so we don't have flames. get a vacuum line hooked up to this otherwise this thing's gonna run like crap. Well, the fuel pump seems to work. Kind of dirty. Whatever dirt was in the tank. Lines and all that's kind of finding that filter. That's why I put it there. Alright, so we got the vacuum advance hooked up. That's good for now. I don't know if it works or not. Let's pull out our hood prop. I had to make this. It certainly sounds like hell on wheels. Let's see if it moves. Huh. Kind of does. mirror yet. Wow, first gear is like way. It does work. Brakes are terrible. As you'd expect when they're brand new. Well, tried a lot of things here to go do a driving in this thing, but this is about his first drive as it's gonna get, guys. Hey, hey. It's barely running. Oh, it keeps on dying too. That's what it keeps doing, so then it, it restarts, but I can't really, I'm going to have to get some more, uh, it is not going to, generator lights on, 
brakes are crap. <laughs> Keeps on stalling and then it won't start. It runs out of gas or something, I can't really tell. It seemed to run all right. As soon as I start going somewhere, it doesn't want to. I don't know. Well, I guess my best scientific guess is that these points are done. And it was a condenser, one of the two. Oh, the cap looks brand new. <laughs> it's not the greatest either. But it's not that bad. Uh, I'm thinking the issue is, well, sometimes what happens on these is the uh, contact in here too. Oh yeah, you saw that thing just pump. But uh, the contact in here on these two piece units goes bad but the way it's running it just kind of seems to run okay and then you put it under a load and it dies and then uh, of course the starter is starting to you know I just need to I need to take it apart and clean it I think really uh, I bet you anything that starter's fine I'm gonna have to I think these points I'm gonna have to get them out of here and put a new condenser in this thing it's just not going to make it. So anyway, I'll pull the distributor and we'll do that. I, I don't know. Um, uh, see if I can find a set. They're the two-piece ones, I think. I'll pull it out real quick and we'll look at it. Yep, that's what it's running like. It just seems to me like... When it starts coughing and spitting and then shutting off like that, it just tells me it's it's not fuel, you know, it's got to be points. So let's get them out of there and we'll take a look at it and see. Yeah, I even uh, sucked on this guy and the vacuum advance works too, so. But yeah, I'm just sure that condenser is the issue, so. It's old, you know, obviously, and a lot of times these old ones work better than new ones, so, but not this time. I think it's done. Well, let's go drive it around and see if it is any better. I can't find my timing light right now. I, I don't know. I don't know where it is. Since I don't use it very often now. runs better but it's I can't even get it as soon as I give it enough gas to go it just runs out like this I can't it's just not working see it just died runs out of gas <laughs> There's a main jet, there's a jet plug somewhere. I probably the just have to pull the carburetor actually fix it. It's not gonna let me drive it. Well, took it off and the float belt will levels pretty good. Doesn't look too bad for I don't know if you guys can see that in there. Get some more light. See what happens. Yeah. Sucking some dirt in somewhere. Just runs out of fuel. Is that the main jet? No, that's not the main jet. Air jet. 
It's got to be. I don't. I don't know. I've never. I don't think I've worked on one of these in years. I don't know if I've ever taken one of these apart. Maybe I have. A long time ago. Let's check the main jet here. See if it's can. See if we can get anything through that. Has a one twelve and a half little lean. All right. This is the thing I was telling you guys about. See how that's plugged. Yes, what that is. It's barely getting enough fuel in and it runs out of fuel. So that's what's going on. Had this happen before on another 36. Now you know why I put the filters right there. Look how that is now. That's the way it's supposed to look. So I put the filter up right near the carburetor if I can. This picks up rust and that's rust from the lines. And it picks it up and stuffs in the carburetor. And it was just getting enough fuel in for it to idle and run. But as soon as you put it under a load and you start driving it, it would run out of fuel. And it was also having some issues with the ignition at the same time. So and those two issues at the same time. Wonderful. Well, I took the accelerator pump off just to see. And it seemed like it was pretty good. So I blew out all the little holes for it. And you put the spring in. So I'll show you. The accelerator pump itself looks pretty good, like it might work. So there's enough diaphragm there. It seemed like it didn't have any holes in it. So I'm going to put the spring back in. And then I cleaned out the little holes. They go over there. They were kind of plugged up. So that was probably the issue there. Plus there was a lot of gunk inside this little area here. I think if I just put this together, it might work now. So then I don't have to rebuild the whole carb. Basically, I went through the whole thing. Anyway, all the ports and everything, there's not much to these. There's only like, ah, uh, not much. All right, that's it for the carburetor. Uh, well, as soon as I start to go uphill, it won't go. Watch, let's see if it does this hill. Go uphill. Nope. No go. That's what's going on. I'm not going to be able to drive this thing. I'm done. This thing's... Timing's too far advanced, and I can't find my timing light. It starts right up, but I can't drive it uphill. I mean, I've tried a bunch of different things, and it just... I have to really dig into this thing and find out what's going on. Probably the valves are just as soon as they get this amount of compression or something and as soon as it starts to go uphill it just won't go. The carb's fine. The carb's cleaned out. It's running okay except as soon as I go uphill it's like maybe the coil's weak. Um, I don't have it's not charging. There's just too many issues. So anyway, I think that's it. I'm done with this for now. At least it'll move around the yard. That's as far as I'm going to get it right now. So anyway, so much for driving it. I got through a couple of gears. Feels like the transmission works. I, all I could take it up my street, down my street. I couldn't take it up the street. As soon as I start to go up the hill, it just, it won't make it. It won't go up the hill. I got a little hill. That means if I leave my street, then I'm going to go downhill, and I won't be able to get back. So, it's just not going to work, guys. So, anyway, that's it. I'm just going to leave it there. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe, and see your comments. And I, I have no idea what's wrong. Um, it's got to be, it's got to be ignition. It won't go uphill. And it's got fuel. So it's not the points, it's got to be either the coil or, I don't know, or just it could be just not enough compression when it's going uphill, it it just uh, starts to misfire and then it just won't go. It's terrible. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Next one.